This is Helping of Happiness, episode number 119. Today we are talking with Jenny and Joe first from Of Progress and Purpose podcast about having a meaningful identity. Hi, you're listening to Helping of Happiness. I'm your host, Hilary Hess, a crazy mom of seven kids who loves to eat and loves to travel. Mom life can be exhausting, hectic, and scary at times. So let's take this journey together. We can love, we can learn, we can laugh, we can cry, and we can become better friends while we're at it. It is so fun today to have our friends from a Progress and Purpose podcast, Joe and Jenny first. Joe and Jenny, say hello. Hello. Hi. We're so excited to be here. I am so excited to have you. I feel like a fangirl because I listen to your podcast, so it's super fun to be able to like be talking to you for real and not just have you in my head. <laughs> so, will you tell our audience a little bit about your family, and then let's tell them all about your podcast. So, go ahead and introduce yourselves a bit. All right, Jenny asked me to take this one. Um, so, Jenny and Joe, that's that's us. Um, we also have uh, two small kids, age two and four, named Rosie and Dutch. Um, and uh, we just kind of live in the dream, you know, uh, just the four of us. And, and so, uh, you know. We're struggling through the sleep schedules right now. Oh, That's where we're at. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that we'll ever get out of that. You just like. never sleep. You just accept it. You just <laughs> I know. That's what I said. I feel like I got lied to because everyone was like, well, you're not going to get much sleep as a parent of a newborn. And I was like, okay, I can handle that. Like six months. Cool. And then I'm like, is this going to go on until our kids are 10? Because <laughs> it's going to be real hard. <laughs> I feel like you kind of hit that sweet spot where they're like school age kids and they sleep pretty good. And then they turn into teenagers and then, yeah, and then they just, just don't go to bed and yeah. <laughs> stay up till three in the morning. Oh, totally. Yeah, so that's, We'll look forward to that. And hopefully that's, we have a few years till that happens. Um, Jenny uh, stays at home with the kids. Um, so um, other than the podcast, uh, she's kind of a stay at home mom, I guess is what the term is. Uh, I am a teacher. I teach at a middle school. I teach shop or industrial arts or technology education, depending on what generation you're from, what you call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I have a blast at that. I teach eighth and ninth grade, um, which is funny. I swore up and down. I'd never teach middle school, but I'm actually enjoying it quite a lot. Um, I also coach robotics after school, which is a fun thing that I do too. So um We'll see how this year goes. Yeah, we'll see how this year goes with <laughs> all the... This is a weird year to be teaching a hands-on yeah, topic, it's, uh, right? I, it's it's going to be definitely interesting. I don't think it's going to be all that bad, but it, it's going to be interesting for sure. Um, I have a so, boy that would probably love taking your class. That kind of stuff is right up his alley. He would be all over that. Most kids who take my class want to be there, which is a definite advantage I have over some That people. is a huge plus, especially for that age group, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. We do some cool things, and the kids, kids have a blast. So. so cool. Okay, so let's talk about your podcast. What's the story behind it? How did it all get started? <laughs> So, like Joe said, I stay at home aside from the podcast, and I really needed that in my life. <laughs> I We live about 40 minutes from the biggest town, and I'm already super, I've been a homebody, like, my whole life. I love my family, and my mom was always like, I was worried about you when you were in high school. <laughs> like, you never left the house. Like, that's how homebody I am. And so now that we're even farther removed from town, and it's just, I feel like I just woke up one day and I was like, I need something in my life besides my children, who I love very much. And I kind of, I had a blog going and I thought, well, maybe, maybe we'll try this and see because. I feel like I can get into a lot more speaking than I can like writing it out. 
and I can be more real because <laughs> I feel like my writing voice is sometimes more formal than I actually am. <laughs> well, isn't that funny how some of us are better speakers than writers and vice versa? So I yeah. think that that's so great that you know that about yourself. Yep. And then I just... I begged Joe to do it with me because I was like, I, well, first of all, I listen to a ton of podcasts. I love podcasts. And when I had my postpartum depression, there was a podcast I was listening to called Famous at Home. And it's a husband and wife that do it. And they, I felt like, <laughs> we've talked about this before, I felt like they were my best friends at the time. I'm like, you don't know me, but I literally have no friends, and I'm going through a really hard season, and like, thanks for talking with me about parenting, and like, when it's really hard, why it's hard, and and what I can do to take care of myself, and all these things, so I just felt like it really pulled me out of that space. And then I wanted to recreate that. <laughs> so I feel like I wanted Joe to do it with me so we could be a team. And then I wouldn't have to do it by myself. <laughs> so. She didn't really have to talk me into it that much. It was it was a, kind of a mutual thing. I, I was excited. Yeah. Uh, I, and I, before I did it, like, make sure you're really on board because I don't want to come into this as a couple and then have you change your mind and then be like, go oh, out of it. Just me now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tough luck, guys. The best part of the equation is gone. So, <laughs> oh, whatever. I don't know that. You did do a few solo episodes uh, last December, I think. I, I was did. really busy with something and I can't remember what it was. And so, but anyway, yeah, it, it's a team effort, and uh, we're both happy to be out on here. But Jenny does handle most of the nuts and bolts. I just kind of show up and have a conversation. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's fun together, too. I feel like it gives us something to talk about besides the to-do list, and that's nice. <laughs> And besides the kids, right? Just something mm -hmm. completely different, which is it is, so it, is it is actually difficult to do that, you know. It you is. Hear people before you're a parent, they're like, "Make sure you have some time to talk about something other than the kids." And you're like, "Ah, oh, yeah, whatever." No, that's like a thing. So it's <laughs> and hard. So it's day subtle. night comes around, and that seems like the, all we talk about when we're away from the kids is the kids, and it's just not good. We need something else to talk about. So yeah, I love that you guys are doing that together. It's so fun. So. Let's tell, if you don't mind telling my audience a little bit, our friends listening, what kinds of things do you guys talk about on your podcast? I mean, I know because I listen, but they, <laughs> so they might not all know you yet. Well, first of all, I have to say I'm a huge fan of you too. I just got done re-listening, I, I guess, listening for the first time to the episode that you re-aired about the sex trafficking. And we oh. listened to that together in the car and we were just like, Phew. oh, isn't that incredible? Oh. Yeah, so, so incredible. So I I met um, Matt in a self defense class. He came and taught our church group, and I was like, "You have to be on my podcast. You're just so incredible." He has so much to offer. I could have talked to him for hours about that stuff. Yeah, that was super interesting. And he doesn't he doesn't listen to as many as I listen to, but he got hooked on that one too. <laughs> but we we talk a lot about identity is is the biggest thing for me and like I mentioned it was from that season of postpartum depression and wanting to make friends and like and I just felt like I I want to share this journey with other women and other parents and and so most of it is about knowing and loving who you are <laughs> yeah I, I, and I think for me like from my side of it um you know I, I haven't ever struggled with anything like depression or anything like that. I mean, I've had my hard times in life, but I really think that um, identity, you know, knowing who you are and, and being really solid in that knowledge and having a purpose uh, enables you to kind of live a life of meaning. I think so many people are searching for, they think, they, they think what they need is happiness. And and the, and and I, and that's true. I don't want to say that people don't need happiness, but 
I think that even deeper than, you know, being happy, we need to have meaning in our lives. And I think that having a, a strong sense of identity and purpose and being able to clearly see what that purpose is and be able to follow it um, is essential to having meaning in life. And that, and that meaning is what gets you through the times when you're not happy, uh, when life is hard, because life, you know, a lot of the time it, it's really not um, something that's fun all the time. We, we all deal with stresses um, and different things that happen to us, even tragedies. And so I think that having that sense of purpose and identity is essential to getting through those um, and being able to bounce back and, and live, you know, have happiness in our lives um, because of the meaning that is in that. Most people are not going to go out and, you know, be the next, you know, Gandhi or whatever. <laughs> you know, that's just not what most of us are, are capable of or in the, in the position to do. But if you really want to change the world, you know, changing your world, your sphere of influence, that that is what adds the meaning there and you know making alleviating some of the the suffering that's going on around you you know making the world a little bit better place even just for for one person that that's in your sphere of influence that's that's all you need to to have meaning in your life really i love and that. i think i think that's particularly applicable right now because there's so much going on that i just get like really overwhelmed about all of these things that are horrible, terrible. And, and I feel like, oh, I need to take action here and here, and I want to be involved here and I want to change the world. And, and I love how you put that, that like, it's okay to just lift where you stand. And especially as a mom with changing diapers and like, like sometimes when it all gets to be too much, I just, bring it back to maybe I can raise good humans and that will be enough. And, and it's not that I don't want to try to do the other things, but I just have to focus on where I, where I can put that energy, where it will do the most good. And, and a lot of times that's not getting involved in an argument. It is changing the diapers and it is, teaching your kids to be kind and raising responsible humans. And that takes a lot of time. <laughs> it yeah. does and a lot of effort for sure. For yeah. Sure. I think, I think parenting is, is probably honestly, you know, one of, if not the biggest uh, job that there is like raising that next generation. If you want to change the world, that's <laughs> become a parent, you know, for sure. I agree with that completely. And I'm feeling the weight of that even more with the new schooling that we're having this fall and just feeling so much more responsibility with the kids being home and not really going to school that much anymore. Yeah. So I, I think that it's super important. I think more now than ever, I'm realizing that this is my chance to be that influence and to have a good attitude about it. Well, that's exactly what I was going to say. You know, I, I, I see a lot of parents who are, you know, wondering what to do with, with this whole situation. And I, I'm sitting here thinking, as an educator, you know, I'm thinking, here's your chance, you know, <laughs> grab that bull by the horns and run with it. Like, it's, it's going to be tough. Like, I'm not going to lie. But um, as an educator, like, like a parent who is, whether their kid goes to school or not, mm -hmm. you know, depending on whatever situation they're in, a parent who is invested in that. In, in educating their child is, I mean, that's, that's awesome. You know, take that opportunity and run with it. Well, good. You're encouraging me. <laughs> we have a split. <laughs> and, and it's split okay. That, you know, don't doing. worry. Like it, it, you're not going to be perfect, but that's okay. Like, you know, things are going to work out fine. Just keep cheerleading. So half my kids, well, half my kids, two of my kids are going in person and then three of my kids were trying homeschool for the first time. And my oh, daughters this morning or tonight when I'm talking to men, they're like, 
we don't want school to start in a week. We, you know, and I said, but it's going to be so fun. You're going to be with me. It's going to be so great. It's going to be a lot of work, but we're going to have so much fun. So hopefully I can keep up this positive attitude in a week. <laughs> we'll see. <how> <laughs> I, our oldest is four and I'm like super nervous about it too. We, we were planning on homeschooling anyway, but now I'm just like, okay, I guess I won't back out. Like, <laughs> there goes my out. <laughs> but I've totally been nervous too. And I had a friend tell me that if homeschooling gets to be too much, just read, read, read. And so <laughs> I'm like, okay, I can do that. I, I can, can do that. On that. Especially read. with a four-year-old, it's not too bad, I think. Not too intimidating. <laughs> It'll be great. But good luck. <laughs> We can always Zoom or FaceTime, and my kids will read to your four-year-old if you need a break. <laughs> <Deal. laughs> part of their reading. So do you guys have a favorite episode of your podcast? Do you have one that you love more than any of the others, or are they all your babies? Uh, we, I think one of the things that I've learned about podcasting and doing this whole thing with Jenny is that you know, some nights you're like off, you know, or whatever, oh, yeah. and, sometimes, and sometimes you're really on. Um, which I guess is the same as anything, you know, any, anything that you're doing some days are better than others. But, um, I think my favorite episode or I think there's a group of them is the, the ones that we did last season, uh, where we took, um, basically movies and stories. Yes. I'm so glad you said this. Those are my favorites too. Yes. And, and we went through and, and we talked about like some of the fundamental, um, stories of identity and purpose that were within embedded within those stories i really actually this might sound weird coming from a bearded man such as myself but <laughs> i i really enjoyed the one we did on frozen too that, yes. that was i think my favorite one so i knew I he was gonna one. say that i knew it i called it <laughs> well lord of the rings was i mean that one is you could see spend i mean and you touched on all on my favorites star wars frozen we had just watched <laughs> And Lord of the Rings. I mean, I just identified with that so much. And I loved how you talked about the characters because they all feel like my friends because I know those stories so well. So it was just fun to hear how you felt about them and their qualities. And I don't know, that just kind of really connected with me. That kind of is what got me hooked on your podcast was when you did those movie ones. And I, you know, we were just <laughs> talking about all our friends. It was so fun. So I love we, those episodes. We had a blast recording those two. And, and I think we seriously considered at the end of that month, well, maybe we should pivot and just do like movie podcasts for the rest <laughs> of time. <laughs> we didn't end up doing that, but it was really fun. So yeah, there were, and it's fun there to were have a little series five. like that, right? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Joe. No, it's okay. I was going to say there were four or five other movies that we considered that we didn't, that didn't, we didn't end up doing it. Didn't make the cut. On, yeah. <laughs> well, and they seem like a lot of work. I'm sure you went into a lot of depth thinking about those movies and diving, you know, delving into them. I mean, I felt like you probably did. Maybe you did. Maybe it was just easy for you. <laughs> work but... being pop some popcorn and sit down in front of the TV with the kids, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun. <laughs> I loved it. It was really great. And I just think it's fun. I don't know just when you incorporate something that is familiar with somebody, because then I got to know you guys better through that. And then it was fun to keep listening. And anyway, so I really enjoyed those. Those were fun. Thank you. No, no. I feel like every podcast is my baby. Like you said, I think, <laughs> I think it gets better as we go. And so usually my favorite one is whichever one is about to air and I just can't wait. And then the next week I've totally forgotten about that. So <laughs> I feel the same way. I feel like it's whichever one I've just recorded because sometimes I batch out the episodes and so it might not even be the one that's airing that week, but whoever I've most recently talked to, I'm like, oh, this is the one that I'm super excited about. Yeah. <laughs> so fun. Okay. So I really like that you guys talk a lot about mental health because I feel like that's a topic that we just can't say enough about. Um, do you mind just telling me a little bit why this topic is so important to you guys in particular? Yeah, I think both of us have family that has been affected by mental health. And I know for me, I have two brothers that have been diagnosed with schizophrenia. And, and I feel 
feel like it's different behind the scenes. There's, there's definitely an aspect of maybe reality versus not reality, but I, I think that people don't get to see the whole person behind all of that. And so it's been super interesting for me to say, like, what you see isn't the full picture. And I also, I know that I've been afraid of it myself. Like, I, I don't know that that's a good thing, really. But I feel like talking about things and being more open about things kind of starts to dispel that fear a little bit. And that's why I want to bring it up, because I want people to know, well, A, we all have our struggles, even if some are more visible than others. But also, I want them to know that this isn't the only part of me. Like, if I have this really hard time with anxiety and depression, like I've struggled with after the birth of my kids, and, and Joe probably puts up with it the most, but he, he knows the rest of me too. So I hope that that makes it worthwhile. And I feel like I want to start doing that as a community, as a society and say, what more is there? And kind of get rid of that stigma a little bit. And not even that mental health issues on their own are a bad thing because sometimes like trials make us better people and that's that's part of that too yeah I love that we have a lot of mental health going on in our family too so I love when other people are willing to talk about it because it's not talked about a ton and I learned so much just from hearing other people's sides of things and how they're reacting to all of it. So I appreciate it that you guys are willing to share that. So is there anything else? I'm sorry, look like you're gonna say something. Oh, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, I, I don't think that that applies only to mental health too. Just like you said, you can learn so much from other people by being willing to look past the service, the surface. And, and we have, been learning that right now with all of the different issues going on and all of the different opinions going on. It's like, I just, I can't define a person by where they stand on that. I have to say what, what's underneath that. And not just with mental health, but with differences in general, I think that we need to be more willing to be vulnerable about those and also be willing to embrace those from other people and and it, both things are hard easier said than done <laughs> I think it's super hard and I think I've as I've grown older I've realized that not everybody thinks like me even though I think everybody should I mean <laughs> no, I know that now but I didn't probably know that 10 or 20 years ago for sure I just was in this world thinking, oh, everything's pretty black and white. You know, I didn't really think that people would think totally this way. It must be a bad thing or a good thing, you know. So I think as I get older, I learn more that there's a lot more in the gray than there is in the black and the white. Yes, that's what it is. And that we're not, you know, even as you talked about some of these characters in these movies, that it's not like they're 100% pure good. Every, all of us have got a mixture of some of these good qualities and these bad qualities and these things that, the, that we're working on. And um, you can't just look at one person's little defining moment to define their whole person. So Yeah, I think, I think that the, the irony of this whole thing is that um, going back to the, the concepts of identity and purpose, the more rooted you are in your identity and your purpose, the less likely you are to um, be judgmental or unforgiving of those who are different than you, I think. Um, and, and I liked what you said about like, not judging people by their little defining moment. I think in today's climate, especially with some of the um, technological uh, communication that we have through social media and other channels, um, it becomes very, very easy to only see 
that part of the person that gave them their 15 minutes of fame and not see everything else you know that was underneath and and what's motivating them and why but i think if we understand ourselves that's the first step to being able to understand other people yeah i love that so you guys have been sharing a lot of journal prompts lately with this new season do you mind telling us a little bit about kind of what those are what your purpose is with that and just get into it. Sure. Well, we've we've only had a few so far, so I hope that they're working out for people. But we, when I was starting the podcast, I asked a group of women because I was taking a course on it, um, and I asked, "What is something that you really love about the podcast that you listen to?" And they said, "We really love stuff that is actionable." And I was like, "Okay." I can do that. I'm going to put an action item at the end of every episode. And then when we got into it last season, because most of what we talk about is the inner work, it was really hard to turn that into action items. And, and almost all of them ended up being, go write this down. <laughs> so this, <laughs> this season I was like, okay, we're, we're going to try this and do a, just do it as journal prompts to begin with. And I think that that's worked out to be a lot more clear. <laughs> well, and I think also from, again, from a, my standpoint as an educator, uh, writing is an extremely powerful way of taking the thought work that's going on inside of our heads and organizing that and really getting it clear with ourselves. Um, because when you, when you have to put something down on paper, you know, you have to now organize it into something that makes sense. And, you know, you have to apply grammar rules and all of this stuff to it, you know, and that really helps you get it clear what it is that, that you're trying to think, you know. So I think writing is, is, a, is a really important um, action that we can do that helps us do that inner thought work. Um, so I think that that's another big reason why we went to the journal prompts. Right. And just like he said, the first step to understanding other people is to understand yourself. And, and one of the things that I have been working on in my own personal journey is not worrying about what other people think. I think about comparison and people pleasing and that's like my number one struggle especially with momming and all of that and and the, the answer is the same you have to know who you are but a lot of that isn't frilly work it is putting in the time to get inside your head <laughs> and writing is a good way to do that because Sometimes I feel like when I'm writing, I'm just totally spitballing and half of it didn't even make sense. But then I got one line out of there that I was like, oh, I can add that to this little piece of my identity that I'm building up and it, and it helps me figure things out. Yeah, yeah that, that process of, of doing this thinking and, and writing it down, it's an iterative process, you know, like you write something down. And, you know, in, in kind of an informal journal sort of setting, you realize that, okay, this is where I'm at right now, but, you know, I'm still working on this. I'm, I'm going to have additional iterations of this particular line of thinking and, and discovering who I am. And, and so it gives you a chance to kind of watch yourself unfold, you know, as, as you're going through and, and doing this writing and, and stuff like that. So. So do you mind sharing one or two of the journal prompts that you guys have been putting out there this season? Sure. One of our journal prompts that I think, and I just started putting these on Instagram too. And so one of them that got the most. Which I back, like for the reminder, because sometimes when I'm listening, it's when I'm exercising or I'm cleaning. So it's fun when I see it again on Instagram. I'm like, oh yeah, wait, I got to, I remember to do that, right? Yeah, and I and I think it helps me condense it too into something that can be quick and doable because I'm not one of those 
journal for 15 minutes person. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it takes that long, but ideally in an ideal world, it will only take me five. <laughs> but one of the journal prompts that I think resonated with a lot of people was the one that we did about boundaries. And so we said first, make a list of your family or your individual values. And when we did this episode, we were talking specifically about raising kids and parenting. And so we did family values and I put kindness, respect, love of learning, personal responsibility, emotional intelligence. Those were some of the values that I listed. So first take some time to list some values and then create meaningful boundaries with these values in mind. So kindness turned into, we don't hit, kick, or say hurtful words to our siblings. Respect to, we use our manners, we say thank you, please, we listen the first time. Love of learning to, we encourage why, we follow up with reading, we Google things. <laughs> YouTube is great. Yeah, I would love it over here too. <laughs> and so we just took this list of values and we turned it into boundaries. But I think that when your boundaries mean something to you, that's when you're going to enforce them. And that's when they're going to be easier to enforce. So if you start with the value list and then you write the values and then you write the boundaries out, then it's going to be easier to put those into practice. And then the last step to that we had was to fill in the blank. When this boundary is broken, I will, or we as parents will, dot, yada, yada, yada. So. I love that. I think that this comes in perfect for the beginning of the school year for our family, because it's kind of a good time <laughs> to start fresh and kind of reassess where we're at. I don't know. I feel like the beginning of the school year is kind of like New Year's. It's like a second New Year's for, for our family. So I yeah. think it's going to be, a, this would be like a great family council to get together and talk about what it means to all of us, I think, and maybe get us all on the same page. I love that. Yeah. And I like that bringing your kids into the conversation. I think that's something that we want to do as our kids get older too. Yeah. That's definitely something we, we, believe in so well i need to get them on board because they're the ones that need to follow the boundaries <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> they need to love those boundaries i love that journal prompt did you have another one yeah we can share another one so one that we um have for just this week's episode was when i feel uncomfortable or upset fill in the blank i do this and that is because we talked this week about hard conversations um, as we're recording this episode. We talked about the talk and the DTR and <laughs> all this fun stuff. But the idea behind that journal prompt was you're going to be uncomfortable. So how are you going to handle it? Mm -hmm. And, and if you know how you already handle it, you'll be more equipped to change that. So I think just sit down for a minute and make a list what you do when you feel uncomfortable. What are your knee jerk reactions? And I think that that would be helpful to know. <laughs> These are so great. And I love that you talk about all this stuff on your podcast and just get us thinking about different ways that we can improve ourselves and our family and love ourselves. So I think that's really neat. Let's tell our friends wherever they can find you. Can you give us your handles and where we can listen to your great podcast? Yeah, we're just at Of Progress and Purpose on Instagram and Facebook. And our website is ofprogressandpurpose.com. And we've got, I think we're pretty much on all of the platforms. Yeah, I was going to say we're on Anchor. We have this, Stitcher. yeah, we have this cool host that just like sends it out to everyone. And so I don't have to do it manually. and. That's so we should be wherever you listen, but if not, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we're going to put links to all that in the show notes. I'll have you send that over to me so we can plug it in and people can just plop, plop, plop right where they need to go. 
you are such a gracious host and and it's so fun i could just chat with you all day so we really should homeschool i know we together. should we should do it we need to do it it's going to be so fun i think that that's been one thing about this whole covid situation that's been great is it in some ways we feel so isolated in other ways we realize we're just a zoom call away from everybody right we're just they're just right here so we yeah. will have to do it. We'll have to get these kids reading to each other because I have some people Deal. that are gonna need <laughs> something to do and I'm going to be like, there's so many of you, you're driving me crazy. So, okay. <laughs> the list, I always try to ask my guests if we have a minute to get into our three helpful and happy questions because this ties into my blog, the Helping of Happiness website, where we talk of not only housing the podcast archives, but we talk about food and family travel because those are my favorite, favorite things and homemaking hacks because I need advice just as much as everybody else. So do you guys mind starting out? What's your favorite food or meal? Um, I really enjoy uh, just about any kind of meat. I like to Ooh, cook meat. a lot. And, and I like- Are you a griller? Are you a slow cooker? Or how do you like your meat? All of the <laughs> above. I, I try and learn any different way I, I, can, I can cook meat that tastes good. Um, so I- <laughs> You being from Texas, I, I learned some of the smoking techniques oh, when I spent some time so in Houston. Good. Um, I can I can do a pretty mean rack of ribs, but I also um, like using a slow cooker um, as well. So um, all of the above is good. Grilling he can feed me anytime. That sounds so yummy. <laughs> Anything he cooks is so good. Yeah. So do you do more of the cooking, Joe? Or do you do more of the cooking, Jenny? I do most of the cooking, yeah. <laughs> I don't like, cook at all. Oh, not me, not me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's one thing I'm grateful for. <laughs> I came oh, from a family so where I'll have my mom strengths. cooked bread from scratch. Um, I, I didn't have store bread until I was in high school. So I learned a lot of, you know, how to cook anything from scratch from her. And then my dad also would cook on Sundays. So uh, I, I kind of just grew up with that. And I, I, I love really that example it. of the dad cooking too, though. That's really great. It's always funny whenever my husband cooks, my, my kids are always like, you know how to cook? I'm like, yes, he cooks often enough. We shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> my four-year-old has already asked me, oh, is mommy cooking dinner tonight? <laughs> like, just like that. <laughs> That's how bad it is in our house. She's four and she's already conditioned she's... to not be excited. <laughs> Jenny's not even bad at cooking at all. I don't, I don't see where that comes from. But... <laughs> that is so well, funny. I, I don't do meat. That's that's what it is. Like I can do the crock pot. And I can she wants do, all the meat. <laughs> I can do casseroles, but whenever I cook meat, it's either too dry. We're uncooked in the middle. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so that's why my kids don't get excited when I do it. <laughs> oh, I so, love it. So the key to cooking meat is understanding what's called the Maillard reaction. It's the, the browning, the chemical reaction that causes browning in the meat. So if you want to get good at cooking meat, go Google that. Okay. Sounds good. I'm always looking for ways to improve my cooking. So I'll have to. I'll have to do that. So meat is Joe's favorite. What about you, Jenny? What's your favorite food or meal? Ice cream. Oh, yes. <laughs> Chocolate. Totally can I, can I count those as a meal? Oh, but yeah. Honestly, I see your desserts and I am so sad I don't live by you because you I am to come one of over those people. For real. <laughs> I will pay money, like 30 bucks for crumble cookies delivered to my house. I, it's probably not 30, like, but like it's 20. 20. It's pretty expensive. I was say, it might be 30, depending <laughs> on the cookie. <laughs> yeah, so if I lived by you, I would buy all of that, I swear, in a hurry. And I can bake. I like to bake. But sometimes, because I bake, I'm picky about store-bought stuff. Oh, so yes. I wish I lived by somebody else who baked when I didn't want to bake, and I would pay yes. you to bake for me. <laughs> I'm the same way. It's made me really super picky about what, you know, usually the things that I purchase are things that I wouldn't make at home. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to have something different that I don't normally have. So, oh, that's so fun. We're on the same page with that. And if you're not in Texas, you probably haven't had bluebell ice cream, have you? I have had blue. Well, you've had bluebell. We went there one time on a, on a vacation a couple of years ago. I took her to where I had been and 
um, one of my friends from there gave us some bluebells. So. And some blueberry crisp with it. It was oh, it was heavenly. Mm. That's yeah, my favorite makes meal. Everything <laughs> yeah. there, there are two things in Texas that you can't get in Utah that are, uh, it's just a travesty. And that is bluebell ice cream and good sausage. Oh, yeah. I have to agree. Yep. Okay, so come to Texas. Come eat some meat. Come eat some ice cream. Maybe we'll have a little lettuce on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Call it a salad. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so what is the best? We'll go to question number two. What is the best trip you guys have ever gone on or a dream vacation? Joe just barely took me on the best trip. We got to two state parks and one national park. We went to Bryce. And it was because I am a huge Disneyland fan. <laughs> Jenny, we're just soul sisters. We just are. Yes. <laughs> we went to Disneyland, uh, what, twice in our first three years of marriage? I told him, honey, um, we have to make an every other year deal with the vacations. And every other year we're going to Disneyland. And every other year you can choose. <laughs> That's where we went on our honeymoon. That's where we did everything. And this year was our family vacation to Disneyland. And I was so excited. And then when it got closed and canceled, and I oh. totally followed your cute Disney pictures, by the way. Oh, my so God. Fun. So we so were supposed clever. to go to Disney World on a couple's trip this summer, which oh, we've no. never really been on a couple's. Usually it's always with all the herd of kids, right? So we were yeah. totally bummed that everything got shut down. So we had to do Such Disneyland. A bummer. At home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but Joe put this together for me as a consolation trip and it ended up being amazing. I told him, I don't think I would you will ever hear me say that anything was better than Disneyland, but this was. It was wow. gorgeous. And we had tons of family come and we bought all new camping gear because I was like, I'm not going to camp for a week without a nice bed and a big we are camping, <laughs> not camping. <laughs> it was really, really fun and it was beautiful. So fun. So you went to Bryce Canyon. What other national parks did you guys go to? We went to Bryce Canyon um, and then we went to um, a state park called Kodachrome Basin State Park. Um, and then we went to another state park called uh, Escalante Petrified Forest. Okay, uh, I've heard of that one. Oh, these yeah. are all, I went to Bryce, but like as a teenager, I need to go back and do all this. It was so fun. And our campground had a lake. My daughter caught her first fish. Oh, and cute. It was so fun. And we did slot canyons, which was really, oh, really pretty. Those look so cool. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fortunately, I, I had, uh, I was acting on the advice of uh, a friend from work who lived in that area, and he said, well, here's all the places you got to go that are kind of off the beaten path, so obviously, you know, you got to go to Bryce Canyon and things like that, but we, we went to some lesser known places that were a lot of fun, too, so. See, and this is why I always like to ask my guests this, because I never know when I'm going to possibly be going that way. And then I'm like, oh, I need to call Joe and Jenny. They know exactly where to go. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my way of having resources for better travel. Yeah, you probably have a whole collection. of. Oh, tips. my goodness. My, I have this dream list of all the places I want to go. And I need to travel like every month for the rest of my life to hit all of the places. I think so. Right. I need to make more money so I can travel more. <laughs> or maybe like one of my other guests, I need to turn my house into an Airbnb so that I can make money while I'm gone. Okay, yeah. we totally listened to that episode oh, and we were like, we need to keep me. this house and do that. What a cool I know, thing. I know. Everywhere we go, like we just got back from South Dakota. <laughs> Okay, now we need an Airbnb in South Dakota so that we can visit there whenever we want, but it can pay for itself all the time. And we need an Airbnb at Cata Lake so we can go to the bayou and go fishing with the alligators anytime we want. So I think everywhere I go is my favorite. I couldn't believe that your guest said too that she made money on her trips from doing that. I know. Like, it's incredible. Paid off her expenses plus some. Man, I know. You gotta get, I know. Get I need to do that. It. I think I need to have her on again to like really walk me through this. What are you doing, Jamie? Oh, <laughs> so cool. Such a fun thing. Okay. So let's, do you guys have a homemaking hack for me? I thought of a couple. So 
one that we do a lot with kids parenting wise is bring back the blanket fort. That is my favorite thing to do when my kids are really grumpy is build them a fort. And it's like, maybe it's got a certain age bracket to this tip, but I don't seriously, think so. it keeps them yeah, they like it. entertained for hours. <laughs> and sometimes they fall asleep in it. And yep. sometimes they get even more elaborate when it's your older kids doing it and they can build it themselves. So it's great. I love that. And then the other one I had is that I had a friend tell me, because I, I get super anxious when the house isn't clean. Joe knows. I start <laughs> he's smiling. I start snapping at everybody, and I just feel like if the house is messy, then when my you feel mental uncomfortable, space, you do. Yes. <laughs> A little fill in the blank from earlier. Yes. And so I just get really overwhelmed. But I had a friend suggest just keeping one space for you that is clean. And then because I can't like go around the house cleaning it like a Nazi or it makes me really mad at my family because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, you never clean up after yourself in my head. <laughs> just, or you're like, me and, you say that out loud. Uh, also, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, sh I should <laughs> maybe sometimes do that more and be own it. But <laughs> I just think that if I have just one space, that's for me, it really, it's helped huge, especially during COVID. If I just have one room that I keep clean all day and that can be the room that I sit in, but then I don't have to worry about all the things that are going to get undone, so. I love that tip. And maybe I should make that my master bedroom instead of it being the catch-all, maybe that could be my clean space, right? <laughs> yeah, you have to pick it wisely. My space changes based on where the action is at. <laughs> So it's kind of a rotating space. Okay, I'm glad yeah. it doesn't have to be the same space because generally there is at least one clean room in the house at some point. <laughs> during the day. Just go sit in there, lock the door, and do your meditation. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> as soon as I go in there, though, I have lots of followers that come and bring all their things, it seems like. They yeah. Why it stay away very long. But, oh, I love those tips. Those are great. So we'll have to share those with our audience on Instagram too, so they can hear those fun things. So, well, Jenny and Joe, this was just such a blast for me to get to know you guys. And thank you so much for coming on here and for giving my croaky voice, getting over my cold. I really appreciate it. You guys are just awesome and can't wait for everyone to go find you of progress and purpose, listen to your podcast and see all your inspirational things across social media. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for chatting us. up. It was so fun. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time and listening to this podcast. If you've enjoyed it, please make sure that you share it with a friend. And uh, if you're listening through Apple Podcasts, we would love it so much if you would give us a rating and a review and of course subscribe so you don't miss any other episodes. Um, those rating and reviews really give us some great feedback about how you feel about the podcast and also super helps as far as our rankings go. And if we go up the rankings, then we can be more searchable for other people that might be looking for this content. So I hope you have a really fantastic week. Can't wait to talk with you again next week.